I feel like you just knew from the jump that when Eric Johnson was going to be playing in his 1,000th game, I mean, a part of you just had to know that the Sabres were just not going to win that hockey game. You know, unless unless you're playing your 1,000th game for the Sabres, you're going to win that hockey game. How many milestone games do we run into each year? I feel like it's way too many. Or maybe it's just, you know, you start grasping at straws after a certain amount of time. There was a first NHL goal, too. Yeah, there Zimula was. Zamula had the most, <laughs> the flukiest first NHL goal I've ever seen. Well, actually, maybe aside from Henry Oki Haru, his was pretty bad. But uh, it's just so, so, so predictable. Those are the best kinds of first goals, you know, the ones that shouldn't go in. And then you have Zach Benson's first goal. Definitely the greatest first goal of all time. <laughs> I don't know who you can. Maybe Jordan Eberle is close, Lemuse, but it's one of those two. Lemuse is pretty iconic. First shot, it, breakaway. Yeah. Don't know. Don't care. Even that goal clouded in my memory because they blew that game in overtime. <laughs> yeah, I choose not to remember that part. Yeah. We're coming up on like a year for that game. I think that was the night before Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, uh, no, it wasn't the night before Thanksgiving. Was it not? Or maybe, no, maybe it was. Because I watched that game out at a bar, so. I was going <laughs> to say, I was out with family. Last year was just such a blur, man. And yet, here we are, it feels the exact same. Yeah, more, so. of, more of they the might same have, this They season. honestly might have had a better record during that game. I don't know. There's like a 50-50 shot. Well, like I was saying off air before we started, I... Due to reasons beyond my control, I wasn't able to watch the game last night, but I, I guess I didn't miss much. And How did you feel? How do you feel as a person today? Do you feel like worse that you missed the game or do you feel better? No, I feel better. I mean, I feel like I would have shown up a lot more fired up, but I'm not happy oh, they lost. Would've... I'm not happy they lost, <laughs> I know but you I'm would. sure. If, if you watch I'm... this game, I think you would have brought a certain fire. Yeah, too. you would have been the most fired up one. I think it's I'm funny. S- I think we're swapping roles today. I'm certain that if I were to watch the game, I definitely would have came on here and started laying into people. But I can almost guarantee you just not watching the game that they played a specific brand of hockey we've seen way too often over the last year and a half. Am I wrong? I don't even know if it was a brand of hockey. They they just played hockey. Yeah, There was really nothing more to it. It's just, it's probably the sixth or seventh time I've seen them get caved in by a Tortorella team because they just don't know how to... They still, yet again, only have one way to generate offense. Or now it's just... I don't even know. They just take a bazillion point shots these days, and sometimes it goes in, like Therese Dahlin's goal or even Paterka's goal or McLeod's goal last night. He just buried a rebound from a Paterka shot from the outside. I don't know. It's just... Uh, I think... I think we could all agree. I, I've tended to be more like optimistic and like really give them a chance, but I don't know, man. Like it, it's starting to waver a bit. You know, we're mm-hmm. we're into November, and we're getting close to the the Thanksgiving uh, threshold, and they're a 500 hockey team, really. You know, they're below it now. They're two games below if you discount the the nhl's 500 it just i don't know it's really hard to find any positives because it's the same story over and over and like there's gonna you could take positives away from these games you can you know they got a split without tage thompson but i don't know It, it just doesn't it's not like they split against like the florida panthers and um like the New Jersey Devils or something. They split against a St. Louis team that they should beat uh, and a Philadelphia team that they also should beat, but at least should be doing more than what they did. But they didn't. It was a convincing that the game was over by like, I mean, it was technically over by the time Philly scored their first goal, but it was basically, uh, it was done by halfway through the second period. So I don't know, man. It's just very predictable stuff. It feels very samey and yes i don't come away with it feeling much better do you think um do you think another positive you could take out of this game is that they're well i guess 
out of the start of the season is they they're not getting you know the doors blown off them in the first period consistently other than last game i mean, I mean they're, they're still, their 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 starts are better sure yeah uh their defense is actually better but it doesn't matter the it they're they're generating the same amount of offense as basement dwellers so like what doesn't matter. This league runs on offense, um, or it runs on defense plus goaltending, and you're you're getting shit goaltending too. So, how am I supposed to come away really um, optimistic, other than eh, maybe maybe they put it all together, you know? Well, Jonah, I have some good news for you. If you've checked um, Puckpedia as of recent, we have some uh, unused cap space. So, you know, we might as well start making some use of it, right? Maybe is that going to happen? Probably, probably, I don't know. it probably will. You know, they'll probably add like Michael Bunting or someone, <laughs> and like that'll be it. Or they'll when add, they like, need the I most mean, underwhelming player of all time, dude. They had Dennis Gilbert and Jacob Bryson in the lineup last game, and they were in the lineup the game before that. Like they're nightly players now. You're like two or three trades away from this team, really being yeah, like from being comfortable with this team. Yeah. The Yoki Haru re-signing is just looking worse and worse as the time goes Why on. Why did they like do he... it, man? Why did they do it? This guy's a healthy scratch for three consecutive games a month into the season. I think they did it out of a reason just for necessity needing bodies. And obviously with the one-year deal, you probably look to move him at some point. But I don't know, man. It seems it seems like they just you know wanted to have him around just for, you know, I guess this purpose, you know, Samuelson goes down, you have an injury and he's not great, but it's, it's a guy. It's better than playing. Uh, I don't know who, who the hell's, who the hell's Rochester's first pair. One of those guys. I mean, it should be Dennis Gilbert and Jacob Bryson. I think it's Jim Ryan Johnson and Jack Rathbone. I think, you know, it's just sick name. Such is, a sick name. It is a sick name. It's the same stuff. We've been saying for so long now that we knew it was going to bite them in the ass. I mean, it, it, they iced from game 82 last season to game one of this season. They iced the same exact defensive lineup and they had no fail safe in place. Like, you know, we, we hope and pray that Matthias Samuelson was going to put together a healthy season. He, he ended up not doing so. You had no plan behind that. Mm -mm. and you added nothing on the right-hand side of your defense other than the same guy that had been here the previous five seasons and signed him to a bloated contract in all honesty like guys have been made guys have been getting signed in like what T timothy lilligram was making like 2.5 million dollars and i remember toronto people thought that was too much i don't get it man I, I don't get it. Seems and, like it seems like something a desperate franchise has to do to keep certain people around, even yes. if it's the wrong people, you know. I mean, I don't know. Jonathan Kovacevich is like killing it in New Jersey, and he went for like a fourth round pick. And I, I get, I know Montreal's in your division, but like, I don't know, man. It's just, uh, it's really just tiring to try and like defend. Adams, you know, and I've done a lot of it, and to an extent, I still do. But the fact remains that they built a roster that, like, caps out at, like, if everything falls into place. What, does, does this team have a chance of cracking 100 points? Like, if you're getting UPL from last season, peak performances from two seasons ago from your core players, are is this a 100-point team? If everything goes right the way you're talking about it, they can maybe, maybe sniff only 100 because, points. Only because the Eastern Conference is so bad this year. And but even then, they're like knowing four, them they'll miss. They're like four, eight, and one against the East this year. So it, it's it's infuriating that in year fourteen, year fourteen, you're a maybe wild card team, a maybe. Like Youngest take roster a look. In hockey. Take a look at what New Jersey and Florida, or not Florida, uh, New Jersey and Washington did this season, and like that's the off season you should have had, man. And 
like, I get it. it it's uh, to a certain extent, like this team is going nowhere. And I've said this, they're going nowhere. If Dylan Cousins and if Jack Quinn do not figure it out, but good God, like you could, you, like, you can't like to an extent, I get that you can't take Jack Quinn out of the top six, but it's cause, it's cause you have really nobody under him. I mean, maybe you have Jason Zucker and like, that's it. But otherwise, you know, we we said heading into the season, this team needed their top six to carry the offensive load and because the bottom six was not going to score goals. Well, guess what? The bottom six is scoring goals, but it doesn't matter because you're, second, you're playing without a second line, essentially. Yeah, and Jack Quinn, with each day, I, it just seems like he's never going to put it back together. Just... <sighs> I saw a few clips circulating on Twitter last night and a couple of like play breakdowns on one of Philly's goals. I guess he was, you know, fed a breakout pass that he just completely misread where he was supposed to go. He just ran into another guy, turnover, bucks in the back of the net. Just seems like more and more the same game after game. I think Cousins, Cousins has done a good job, at least somewhat trying to bounce back. But he's not nearly where he needs to be for this team to be where it wants to be in April. And I think Cousins has been inconsistent recently. Yes. Like I think, like for, I think the Blues game, he had a very good game. I mean, he had that highlight. I wouldn't say highlight real goal, but it was a highlight real shift out of him, which was ended up being disallowed goal. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's shown flashes, but Quinn hasn't. You know, it would help him show show more flashes if there was more talent on his line. I mean, I know we dump on Dylan Cousins a lot, man, but he's he's shown like it, when he's playing for Team Canada at the Worlds, he's just lighting it up with these. You know, they, they, he's get uh, that line on Team Canada undoubtedly has more talent than the second line has right now. I think not saying that Dylan Cousins can't be the one who carries a line because I think he can. But when you, when he's struggling, it, it'll, it'll make it so much easier if he has an, I don't know, an Andrew Maggiapani on your line or a, a insert top six winger here, not a Jack Quinn who's been struggling, who came off of injury, two major injuries, mind you, and insert player here a la Jason Zucker, Zach Benson, even... I don't even know. That, Peyton that, Krebs. That actually raises a fantastic point. Like, what, what's Dylan Cousins' average age of wingers the past three seasons? 14 to 15 years old. <laughs> it has to be, like, it's no higher than 25. You take Vinny Henestroza off his wing, you know, from the stints that he was on it two seasons ago, he's been playing with rookies. So it's like he's doing this on his own. And, like, it, I'm not – like, a lot of this falls on him. You're the second-line center. You got to play drive. You are the guy. That's what you're here to do. That's what you're paid to do. But good God, you know, Zach Benson, I love Zach Benson, but it's, he's 19 years old and he's basically been on cousins wings since the start. And Jack Quinn, same thing. And even like JJ Paterka, man, I love him. I love him to death. I, I, I want them to extend him, but he's not like a, a, a superstar yet. Uh, he could be, but you know we've seen like he's great when he's with Tage and Tuck, um, and it's vice versa. They they all work well off each other. But when he it's multiple times this season where he's been with Cousins and Quinn, and he's not the type of guy that can drag or bring those guys up. And um, that's not an indictment of Paterka. It's just like like Cousins is in a play. Like Cousins needs help, and he's playing with an anchor. And for the love of God, I don't know why. Dylan Cousins and Jack Quinn are still together. Like what, especially in this stretch, Tage Thompson's out with injury. Why are they still together? Well, what a better time to break them up. Yeah. I said that to Jonah after the game last night. I was like, there's no better time to try something else with them. Like put Cousins on the top line, put McLeod with, with Quinn and Benson, like just try something new. Like I, this was your time to do it because like we've said in the past, the other three lines have for the most part been fine. So I understand why they haven't split those up. But right now, when you have an injury on your top line, that's your opportunity to fl- to mix up the lineup a little. And they did; they moved McLeod up, but and he's been good. So I like I I'm not gonna say it was a bad decision to put McLeod in the top line, but this was your time to split up Cousins and Quinn. I mean, that's just that's just reference Jonah's tweet from last night. I, I don't know after like the first or second period, 
Jack Quinn and Dylan Cousins together have a 44.29 expected goals for percentage. Jack Quinn without Cousins has a 49.93. Cousins without Quinn has a 53% expect goals percentage. So without each other, they have both been better this year. But with each other, they're like probably the, the worst pair on the team. I just I just think that Cousins is playing with a boat anchor right now. And they just, you're right, they got to get him off that line. But where do you put him? The press box, maybe. Press box is step one. Like, why? That's probably step one. Like, I don't understand. How is he still in the lineup? It's because like, we have no one else. You walked in. Who else do we I mean, have? you're not wrong, but like, do something. You know, at least scratch him so you can say you did it. Like, hello, is this not the group that wanted more accountability? He's barely been set. He's barely all, been set. We're dancing around what the obvious decision is. He was on the first power made. play. You didn't overtime the other night. <laughs> He was. Yeah, he was the fourth yeah. guy. Um, I think we're just dancing around what needs to be done. And Kevin Adams has to just he has to pull trigger on something. I don't it's like are we are we in overpay territory? I think we were in overpay Dude, we've territory been in at the beginning of the off season. Since the beginning of the off season. But guess what? Yeah. It worked when you did it. Right, exactly. Like, and wh- also it's it's a it's a matter of, you know. Maybe some of the other GMs are trying to big dog him because this franchise has been in such a desperate spot and they see everyone sees this organization as a wounded animal and they will just, you know, try and fleece the ever living crap out of this team whenever it it is possible. Because God forbid, if you if you can't if you can't fleece the Sabres, you know, how are you going to make it in this league? It's just we've been we've been the the whipping boy of the, the NHL for God knows how long and. I'm not trying to make excuses for Kevin Adams because this is his job. He's got to make this team better, but sometimes you got to make a risky play to save your own job. And knowing think, the organization you're in, you, you you just it makes it that much more difficult. Yeah, I think you're right. I think a lot of the other teams are trying to big dog us. Like you've been seeing, like every literally every insider has been saying, Kevin Adams is the most active GM right now. He's making the most calls. But then you see. What are the other teams asking for? They're asking for Bowen Byram. They're asking for Dylan Cousins. Like they're all trying to get some of our young good players. Like they don't they don't want to make us better. Like it, no. the, the trade has to make sense for them too. But so he, here's my question: If if you know he's gonna you know pull trigger on a big trade and maybe Jack Quinn is included because they have to do something about him. If they just put him in the press box, he loses even more value. Like do you keep playing him? So at least he's in our lineup and hopefully his value doesn't go down. I'm not saying that would be the best for our team. Like he probably should be in the press box right now. But if you're going to, if he's going to, if Kevin Adams thinking about trading him right now, should he be in the lineup? So it looks like he's at least playing for us. I mean, the thing with him is, is he's, he's young and he's a first round pick. He's still developing. I think that carries a little more weight than the short sample size of how bad he's been playing. But I do agree putting him in the press box would definitely take, tank his value a little bit, but I don't think it'll be as much as some people would think. At least that's in my opinion. But again, every GM sees a situation different, you know? They might just see, oh, a first round pick that Buffalo missed on. What else is new? Like, no, if if we're gonna trade for someone here, um we want more. We want more back. But Kevin Adams no, wants to be a buyer. And nobody's, if you're gonna buy it's gonna be a price. Nobody's asking about Jack Quint because He's no. been terrible, and even the Sabers, they'd be idiots to trade him now. Like, what are you going to get for him? The guy's going to be lucky to get a qualifying offer next. He's going to get the qualifying offer next yeah. summer. But like, what's he going to get you? Like, he's like basically at the stage Middlestat was at two years ago. You know, obviously he's younger, way more. He's flashed way more. But it's it's kind of the same conversation we had about Quinn. It just the worse he plays, the less sense it actually makes to trade him because he's never the value's never going to be lower. It just, I don't know, man. Uh, the Penguins are like, the, you know, JP was saying for weeks, and I'll give him some credit, like teams don't know if they're bad yet. That's a team that knows they're bad and wants prospects in return. Like, hello, go make a deal there. But as I said, it it, it can't stop there. It, it really can't, and it will. Because it, it's taken so long to get one trade, and they're not going to make multiple, but they should. It's like last season. It's just like last season. It took so long to make a move, and once we did, it was almost a value swap. Blockbuster. You know? Yeah, blockbuster. Did I mean, even, I don't think did, did, did they even end up giving? No, they didn't even give up ending a pick in return because Robinson didn't play enough games. 
Oh no, I was talking about the middle stat trade. Oh, well, that was. Fe- I mean, if you want to wait till February to make a trade, but still, luck. it's like people were clamoring for it, and it's just it takes so long. I'm not saying be go out there and be Tim Murray and just wheel and deal willy nilly, but it's like you, you got to do something. And we say this every year: they need to do something, and they wait way too long, and it's underwhelming. A part of me is like, yeah, but part of me is also like this is not a normal situation at all like you are not rooting for a normal hockey team a normal franchise this is not a normal situation no team in the history in the 100 and plus year history of this league has ever been in this position 14 years no playoffs in a diehard hockey market and you're sitting on a wealth of cap space and prospects at a certain point you just like you can't give them any leeway anymore it, yeah. It's enough. I can't keep hearing that Adams is, I mean, first of all, him once again, being the most active GM, it's just, it, it it's freaking hilarious. Like <laughs> we're a month in and you're the most active GM. Uh, I, Something tells me something went wrong over the past few months. Yeah. But at, like, I can't keep hearing, oh, he's active. Oh, he wants to do something big. Like, I just don't, I don't, I don't believe it. Like even the McLeod thing, man, I said it when JP and I recorded that, episode breaking it down like you have to do more and i said even more you can go and look at our tweets from the summer like i said after the mcleod treat everything's great more has to come and if it doesn't it's like an f grade off season and he did nothing from july 5th to october what was it october 4th or 5th when they kicked off the season kevin adams did two things he resigned the goaltender that he needed to resign and he re-signed a bottom six forward and Peyton Krebs, which also took like two extra months to do than it probably should have. That's it. They walked into the office for three months and didn't add. And I don't know if it was Kevin Adams' fault. I'm a believer in the whole internal cap thing. But the Sabres, just call them the Sabres. The Sabres did nothing for three months. They put together a roster that had a ceiling of maybe the third spot in the Atlantic division in a weak year of the division. That's it. it it's you, just you, had, funny because... you never had a chance at the second spot in the division. You never had a shot at the division title. And I'm not saying you should have, but build for it. Build for it. If you're not all in now, when are you going to be, man? When? Never. It's it's just, it's funny because like when he does make the, the moves and the big swings, they've worked out. Like you, you have to overpay for Jason Zucker. It's worked out pretty well so far. Like he's been a pretty good bottom six guy or you know he's been kind of like a utility guy and uh ryan mcleod you just you said you're probably gonna buy his jersey so he's obviously been doing something right you know it's like you make the moves and they work you just don't do enough of them it's like if if you're not all in now when are you gonna be all in man when like you have the ability to go out and have a stupid dumb off season you could trade two of your top prospects, spend to the cap, maybe get overages, and guess what? You'll still be fine because you got a young core and you got so many more prospects. It's just it's ridiculous. It's it's uh it's just a cowardly mentality to have. Um just to not be all in. Just You're taking to too much stock in the process. It's taking way too long. And people are, you know, you're fed up. With, you're fed up with it. It's just, it takes way yeah, too long. It's like, well, and they could still. And it's the thing, you know. I'm, I'm just right now. I'm just riding the wave of anger. It, it, it's they could still, like I said, they could still make the wild card, but it, it it just frustrates me that that's the goal now. Like that was the goal two years ago. Two years ago was maybe we can be a wild card team. Last year was we should have been a wild card team, and you weren't. This year should be all right. We played it too safe. Let's go all out and give this team, you know, everything they want. And they didn't do that. You you walked into the season with a new bottom six. That was it. That was literally, that's all you did. And, and, and the fourth line hasn't even been good. Yeah. You know, it, I, 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 for some reason, I'll be Coupel's in Lindy's doghouse. I don't know why that is. Uh, but he's the best player out of the, the, the four. You know, Lafferty's not has not been good. Malenstein has been doing like what you expected. And Krebs, same thing. You know, I, 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 the guy just is what he is. He's a bottom six player right now. And, you know, Abe Kubel is like the best of that, and he hasn't been playing. The fourth line has not been good. You have two functioning lines on this team. 
It's not a recipe for success. And you're seeing it. They can't generate any offense. Literally none. They're among the bottom of the league. I saw Jay Fresh's post earlier. I think they were like 27th. And like the Blues and the Sharks were below them. Like, what are we doing here? It's it's uh it, it's incredibly frustrating, man. It's been a super, super long tangent, but I, I, this is uh I know I think it what was it, two episodes ago I said, you know, give me till Christmas. Well I'm not waving the white I, I said wait we, we we could wave the white flag at Christmas. And I'm not waving it because like the They'll probably still be in it for the entire season. But it, it's just, like, why do you have to be in it? Why can't you be running the table? The Bruins have the second spot. They have, like, two more points than you. They have, like, one more win. Like, it, it's infuriating. You have two years of the of the Eastern Conference being absolutely awful. And you're a part of that awful. And you can't even say that you gave it your best shot. Because you haven't. You haven't. Over the past two seasons, your additions to a young team that you know, two years ago, least amount of money spent in hockey, youngest roster in hockey. What have you done to surround that group with talent and youth? Uh, two bottom pair defensemen and a bottom six. That's it. No top six additions, no goalie additions when you needed it last year. Nothing. Zip, nada. Even your coach, even your new coach this year picked zero new assistants. And like I defended at the time, it's dumb. It's dumb in hindsight. They, they picked an assistant coach. I get Appert, having him, having him on the bench is fine. Why is he running your power play? He's no power play guru in the AHL. They were always league average. And you're in this season, and it's been better. It's been better over the past few weeks. It hasn't been like great. It hasn't been great. It, it's just... Uh, so many things that just continue to infuriate me. Yeah, if this was your ideal off season, it's a pretty pathetic off season as a GM. If you're like this is your all in year, or you said you know we have to run the table and make it next year, that's it's, in hindsight, and I'm sure we said it at the time. It's, it's a pretty pathetic way to go about you know running into this season. Yeah. I know it wasn't an ideal off season for Kevin Adams. I mean, he basically said he he was trying, and th- th- this isn't me defending him. I'm just saying this wasn't ideal for him, and I'm sure he knows it. That's why he's quote unquote been the most active GM since the season has started. Like, you don't hear that about other teams. Like, oh yeah, we're trying to make a big move at the beginning of the season because he knows it's it's not trending in the right direction. So, I don't know. It it's we're we're a 500 hockey team. We we we're back to five hundred. I I wish we could have been back to five hundred this episode, so we could have renamed it, had another episode named "Back to 500, But that's that's what we are. We're very mid. We're a mid hockey team. We're a five hundred hockey team. And, and until something changes, um, that's that's just how the Buffalo Sabers are going to be this year. I just have a feeling this team's going to finish like. 36 36 and 10 or something stupid uh heroic march to eight and eight as it was always real it's it's what it is man what it friggin is i I just opened my phone to see just to scroll really quickly on twitter because the bills game is starting soon ray davis is is wearing a goat head jersey and i can't help but think uh there's barely been any bills appearances at games this year i can't imagine why can't imagine why, but it is weird. Like last, like two years, it felt like you'd go into the third period. Sabers are down. Okay, let's show let's show a Bills player because that's going to get the crowd going. And I don't feel like that's happened at all this year. No, not, not since I've been there. No. Even they're checked out. <laughs> you know how like those guys are so easy to entertain. Like the 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 Deion Dawkins mic'd up. What, he was the one mic'd up last year, right? He was sitting along the boards. Like it was Dawkins or and James no, Cook. Yeah, it was Dawkins and Cook, and like it's, they can't even be entertained at these games, man. It's. Ugh. I know Deion Dawkins goes to a lot of the games anyway, though. I don't know if they just don't show him, but he he goes. Like, he's at all the, the point. He's, games. He's at the point. It's like, don't please don't show me. I don't it's want like, people knowing him here. I've had enough. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, I feel like I don't want to be too positive, but this is gonna come off very positive. 
everybody's riding the wave of this last game too much, I think. I, I think the last game against the Flyers, it was very bad. But, I mean, it was one game. Without Tage, we split. And quite frankly, I thought the Blues game was a very gutsy win. Um, I mean, down 3-2, we had a disallowed goal. I mean, we haven't talked about that game at all. I thought that was a very good game, um, especially coming back and scoring the goal on the power play on the four on three in overtime. Like, I feel like going 500 without the best player in a team and arguably one of the best players in the, on, in the NHL this year is actually... It's actually pretty good, especially when your goaltending hasn't been good with that. Hey, I I agree. My counterpoint, they've gone 500 with one of the best players in the NHL this season. So that's that that's sort of where I'm at. I yep. Look, I can't ever say I'm not gonna I can't ever say I'm gonna stop watching because it's just that's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna keep tuning in. But me too. Like, it's tough, man. Like it's <laughs> they're five hundred hockey difficult. team. You know, until they're not, they're a five hundred hockey team. Um, and the trends aren't good. They can't generate offense. In fact, they're generating less offense as we go along here. Uh, and I mean, their their entire team runs through like five players right now. It's Rasmus Dahlin. It's uh, Owen Power. It's Bowen Byram even. Uh, and it's Tage Thompson and Alex Tuck. You know, uh, you can throw Paterka in that group if you want. But as I said, even when you drop him down the lineup, he's not helping you as much as, you know, maybe you would want. It's running through, like, five guys. And, like, when those five guys are not on the ice, they can't do anything. It's just a poorly or very flawed hockey team and just way more flawed than it ever should have been, man. Way more flawed. There's just a lack of talent on this team. I think that's like, just a lack of high-end talent. I mean, Jacob Bryson is going to be Owen Power's partner moving forward. And, like, he should be because it's the best option they got. But, shit, man. Like, why why are we still doing this? Why does one injury to your defense group do that to the rest of your group? Why does one injury to one of your top six? And, look, most teams are going to struggle without their top six forwards out. Unless you're the Florida Panthers. But, like... Tage Thompson goes out, and you're left just absolutely scrambling for a few games. Um, you know, you're playing basically without a second line. And ah, it's just there's no fail safes. There's no nothing. And I don't know. It, we're just spinning in circles at this point. Yeah, I was going to say. But I think the second line was good against the Blues. Like that that is my one counterpoint. I mean, Benson had a goal, Cousins had a disallowed goal. They switched lines. What do you, they switched lines in the third period though? Well, that is true. They did switch lines in the third, but their second period was awful. better. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe on grass grassman at straws. A broken I, clock we'll is say, right twice a day. Yeah. One of one of the few players that I thought had a decent game last night. Uh I thought Kulik actually, you know, showed some fire. Um which is encouraging. I don't know, like, if you want to sit Jack Quinn, put Kulik on that line. Like, just do something. Because um, I thought he at least had some chances. I don't disagree. But he's going to be back down Wednesday. So, it's like, well, what's even the point? Or like, it's like, what's Devin even Levi the point? will be down. Or Devin Levi will be down. Which yeah. I will, well, they can I will carry, they can say carry I'm wrong Levi. now. I mean, maybe, I, I guess, I, maybe I don't, they, they shouldn't. They shouldn't do that. They should just send him down. Yeah. I he think he just he doesn't look himself this year. I mean, he's mm-hmm. second worst in the league in expected goals against. Like he's not looking good for him. And you got Reimer now. I don't think I, I don't I think that happened this week. We haven't even talked about that. That Reimer's back. So if UPL is just going to be playing, you know, nine out of ten games when he's healthy, I he might as well just send Levi down because he's not himself right now. Well, UPL he thrives in that environment. You know, you give him. You give him an opportunity to to just run away with games. He's well, they both do. He's he's better. Well, it's it's a matter of like when you you flip back and forth between goalies. It's shown that UPL struggles more. So it's like I'm fine giving him nine out of ten games. I was listening to uh, Chris Baker and Matthew Fairburn last night, and Fairburn brought something up how Levi was saying like he had no idea 
how much of a skill it is to prepare yourself for long breaks because he's never had to do it before. Um, and honestly, it's it. We, we didn't touch on this. Why in the hell did Uko Pekalukunen play against the Montreal Canadiens? Yeah, what, if he was hurt, if he's hurt, why? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are they thinking, man? Like who, who, who thought that was a good idea? It was a matinee game. Like he had no rest time. They played, yep. they practiced the next morning, got hurt at practice, he had less than 24 hours to recover. Well, what are we doing here? Man, stupid stuff. And, you know, Levi goes in cold, and he wasn't good, but he was cold. Yeah, that was, some, that was a really, that was probably the poor, most poorly mismanaged game of the of the year. Yeah. Just, yeah, I don't know what the thought process was there playing your hurt goaltender and then pulling him after he lets up a bad goal because then you're like, oh, maybe this guy's hurt. And then you put in a goalie who just was like, I'm probably not playing today. Oh, I am playing today? Oh, that's great. Well, you know, here's two softies. Well, maybe now, one. And now one you was screened on. He missed two more games because of that. Like, if he would have yeah. rest that game, who knows? Yeah. He might have been fine. Yeah, yeah, really. Well, I don't know about that. We don't want to make assumptions, but you you could be right. Here's a question that maybe you could guess off the top of your head. Maybe not. How many shots do you think the Sabres had against the Canadians that game? Wasn't it 19? It's 18 shots. 18? I believe. Maybe it was 19. It was below 20. The Montreal, it's been a talking point all season. That team can't play defense. And yeah, you scored five goals, but that's because you played Caden Primo. I asked JP this last night, Christian. How many times do you think they've had more than 40 shots in a game this season? I'm going to say once. None. None. They haven't done it. Wouldn't surprise me. They, I think they had 39. It might have been the Kings game. You'd think for a team that shoots as much as they do, they would have more exactly. shots on that. Exactly. You would think. You would no. think that. But they have more shots. They, miss they have shot the attempts. Well, they miss the net, and their shots are from the point. Like it's. It, yep. Darlene's got a blast, man, but if he's taking all your shots, they're going to get blocked. They're going to get deflected mm-hmm. and go wide. And on this team, also, they don't get second chances. Well, that's also a big reason for why they're getting caved in off the rush as much as they are, because a lot of those block shots or, or um, missed opportunities that ring around the boards come back out for an odd man rush. And then, you know, you, 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 you're playing, you're playing with one arm tied behind your back because you're fighting off the two on one every period. By this point last season, last year's roster did it twice. And the year before that, the 22, 23 team did it three times. It's like, it's an issue, man. You know, especially when you're taking as many shots, like something's not adding up. Like you should be, if you're leading the league, I think they're like top 10 in like Corsi four percentage. Like you're taking a boatload of shots and like no shots to really um, have to show for it. It's like something's not adding up here, man. You know, you're playing hockey that I don't think fits the strengths of this team, you know, and that's kind of the issue. Like when you're, when you're, when your roster is running through three defensemen, like, yeah, they're going to be taking most of the shots. Um, but it's also, it feels like they're being told to. The deja vu I just had from hearing that. Because we talked about that a few months ago. When when, you're, when your offense runs through three guys on the point, it is n- <clears throat> not a recipe for success most of the time. No, it's just, it's just not, it's not a winning formula. And it's why they haven't won a lot of games. And it's why they haven't, it's why they haven't beaten bad teams. Because they play the same level of hockey they do against the good teams, which can work because they're a talented team. They have a boatload of talent. They can uh, they can beat the New York Rangers and the Dallas Stars and the Florida Panthers. But if you can't like dominate the bad teams, the St. Louis Blues, the Montreal Canadiens, even the Philadelphia Flyers, you know, at least put in a decent effort against them. It's like you should be dominating these teams offensively. Like two years ago, you know, we knew that the Sabres were going to give the Columbus Blue Jackets fits. And Tage Thompson scored five goals because, like, we just knew that that 
was going to be an issue for them, or even when they played the Canadians that year, or even the St. Louis Blues from that year. They were scoring six, seven, eight goals in a game, and I don't know, man. It, it, that team just isn't there anymore. I, I don't know if they're really playing to their own strengths. It feels like they haven't scored a lot off the rush this year. It, it's You have to evolve as a team, but you also have to play to your strengths, and I feel like they are just in a mismatch of timelines and player development. And the only guys carrying the loads are, you know, your top players and the guys below them just don't know what to do. Yeah. And... This, this talking point, And I mean, we talked about earlier in our episode, it just keeps making me think that they historically messed up last year as well. I mean, they 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 were the highest scoring team in the league in 22-23 <laughs> and then they turn into a defensive team. It's so year. dumb to look back on, man. It's so yeah. dumb. They listen just, to Donny Granado they, messed up so much there. Like yeah. I, I just I wonder if it's still affecting us. It like we haven't gotten that game thing, back. Man. That was an organization well, I agree. thing. I agree. That's why yeah. they signed Eric Johnson. The first thing that Eric Johnson ever said when he got signed was this team needs to play more defense. It's like you're not wrong, man, but Hello, third highest goal scoring team in hockey. Like, yeah, you're going to start. was not helping. Like, <laughs> congrats on a thousand games, by the way. Yeah, yeah. congrats, EJ. Yeah. Thanks for nothing. It's just so, so, so dumb in hindsight that they took an issue with doing that. And your offense has devolved. They tried to evolve it and they did it in the worst way possible. They tried to become the Carolina Hurricanes or they tried to become. They tried to become something they weren't, man. Oh, well. It would be funny to look back on this in like a week. You know, they go on a West Coast trip here. They're probably going to bounce back against the Kings, and then they got the Ducks and the Sharks. So we'll probably come back here next Sunday being like, oh, they've won three straight. Here we go. Yeah, no, I'm thinking like 0-2-1. Oh, it... <laughs> this is a big week for, I don't know, Kevin Adams or whoever's going to be there. They have uh, Blue and Gold's Insight. On Monday the twenty fifth. That's true. So, yeah. Kind of. I'm, if if he's going to speak there, he's got a week yeah, to like, do something or impress everybody, or there's going to be a ton of backlash. They have not announced who's going to be there. I think, but the last few Adams has been to them. Twenty uh, fifth. Yeah, he's fielding questions from season ticket holders. So I would, uh, for his for his sake, I, I would hope he either makes a trade or the team starts performing because. I don't know. I've already sat through an awkward blue and gold insights before when the team was spiraling. I don't want to do it again. And even that one, no, they had just traded for Byram. So it was not fun. That it is true. They fun. did make a trade there, but that was very yeah, that was not fun. Not fun, man. I don't I don't like talking like this. I don't, but it's like they don't put in the effort, so I can't defend them as much, you know? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they put in the effort. Sometimes Kevin Adams does something I really love. Like Ryan McLeod, man. Guy's awesome. So good. Great. I did so very good. Two goals and one assist on the top line in his two games. I was so we were joking last night as the game was winding down, like, oh, they're gonna make a late push. Uh, and then they scored that goal. And I'm like, ah. But then I saw McLeod score, and I'm like, never mind. It was all worth it. You think he could I don't know, man. You think you could just like take that second line center spot away from Dylan Cousins for a little bit of time? Well, it's so funny, like when you talk about this team. Cousins is doing what McLeod is doing. McLeod is probably doing what you would want Cousins to be doing to an extent. So like, it kind of cancels each other out, even though it doesn't. You can have both. Two guys can be good at once. But you can make the argument that they're like reflective of each other. It's just, you know, Jack Quinn, who you needed to take a step, is like not doing that. And even Zach Benson, who's like, he's playing good, playing really good hockey. He had a phenomenal game against the Blues. But is he going to carry the load of... Your second line? No, he's going to play off of who he's playing with at this stage of his career. You know, five years down the line, you want to be driving lines, but it's uh, it was always a gamble, and this is what happens. You have li- player developments are not linear. Uh, you know, Cousins is on a downswing. Quinn's on a downswing. Benson isn't on uh, in uh which I can't think of the word. Exponential. Uh, exponential. He's not on an exponential trajectory. So, so what happens? You got a flawed team, no fail safes. Now you're looking for a trade when you had plenty of time a few months to, a few months ago to do that. So, I don't know. 
maybe when we record next time, Trevor Zegers will be a Buffalo Sabre and we'll have to defend another project, but at least it would be something. So, you know, I'm not going to complain, you know, make a trade. Just hopefully it excites me. I don't know. Patience is wearing thin already. Yearly cycle. It's always November, man. It's always November. Why Why is it always November? Eight game losing streak. This time last year, they were hurt. Tate Thompson broke his wrist. Everybody was playing terrible. Not fun, man. Not fun. Is that how we, how we tapped out for Sabres talk? Is that enough for one I day? I, I think I've I think I've had I my my fill. I think I could keep going, yeah. but if you guys want to stop, <laughs> we, what we else can... is there to talk about? Concerno meter. We haven't done that. Oh, uh, okay. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> what did I say I was last time? Like a seven or I an eight? Even, I don't even know. I think I said, I said eight. A five. I'm gonna continue to stick with eight. Actually, no nine. I'm going up to nine. I'll go up to a seven. Hopefully, when with Tage back, maybe they'll help. But I don't know. This isn't going back down until they start stringing wins together. There's a move made for talent, and when Thompson comes back, he still looks like himself. So, all of that uh, computed together with what was already going wrong moves it from an eight to a nine. It moves that needle a little bit. Look, I I, I want to like contextualize the last. 35, 40 minutes of ranting here. Like, I've, I've said it multiple times. Like, they can put this together. They can be a wild card two team. So, like, I'm not going to put the concern meter at, like, a 10 or even a 9 uh, or even maybe an 8. I, I think I do. I am still at a 7. It's just, you know, these problems. They keep snowballing and building up, and it's just very frustrating that they're just – they did this because they're not, they're not an all-in team, and they should have been. But that doesn't make them a bad team. Or a bottom or a basement dweller, um, but in some areas there are like their their offense is like really really not good, which is like not a good sign for this team. You know if they were if they were you know abhorrent defensively with bad goaltending, fine, but they're a bad offensive team except they can score with a decent defensive team, but their goaltending sucks. Um, the power play is getting better, but the penalty kill is not. It's just they're a 500 hockey team. Um, with talent to do more. So sometimes you'll see more, but they're not complete. So I'll put this at like a seven. Um, yeah, I'll put it at a seven for now. So um, JP, I've been told that you are going to take the reins of this team stinks this week, and we're not doing the Sabres. We're not. We could, but we've, we're not. We've made, that, we've made that very clear already. They don't stink, right? They're just, mm-hmm. just mid. Mid. Horribly mid. mid. But there is a team that does stink. Perfect title for this episode, mid. Well, there's quite a few teams that stink, but I think this team stands out the most recently. Um, give me one second. I, wanna, I pulled up a ton of stats, but I know there's one more thing I want to pull up. This team stinks, JP. It's, it's raw emotion, man. It's just off the top of it's the not, head. Yeah, you're not supposed to be reading off. It just com- it comes from the heart. Oh, I am. There this go. may be the last time he gets this ability because he's supposed hey, to come prepared. I am prepared. I just I forgot that one, one thing. Okay. This team is currently... The, we're saying the Sabres don't stink, but this team has as many points as the Sabres, but they have two more games played. I was looking at that last night. Like They're tied with yeah. this team that we're about to do. Yeah, they do have two more games played, but I had quite a few stats for this team. This team has the worst goal differential in the league, and that's after Christian t- talking about who did we talk about last week? Was it Anaheim or the Sharks had the worst Anaheim most goals had, against? I think, Anaheim had the the least amount of goals for least amount of goals. Yeah, so they have the worst goal differential in the league at minus twenty five. Okay. This team has they here's their record against teams that have a pace of 80 points or higher versus teams that have a pace of 80 points or lower. 80 points or fewer, they're 6-1 one, and 1. Against teams that have a pace of 80 points or higher, they're 1-9 and 2. Good god. Jeez. Dallas Cowboys. This team ask. <laughs> yeah. This team has blown 7 
two goal leads in 20 games this season. Oh, God. Yep. Are we sure this uh, isn't this the same? <laughs> it is not. This team hasn't made the playoffs in two years. They haven't won a, a round in the playoffs since, what, 17, 18, I believe. Oh, man. Um, really and this team. Long? Yeah, I know. I right? believe crazy. it is. Uh, um, and this team has a bunch of old players that are locked up for a few years to come. Um, this team is also a team that Jonah wrote about because they already have like thrown in the white flag hey, that they yeah, stink. Yeah. So they yeah. they've cho- they agree with us. Which I agree. You know, I respect us. that, man. Do you know how like yeah? Do you know how it kind of ballsy you have to be to like tell Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Chris Letang be like, dude, we're we can't win. We got to sell yep. off. Yep. Dude, the funny thing about that is, though, it's it's like this team made a reputation to just like keep bringing the band back. And they were all like, oh, look at us. We could still, you know, be competitive with these guys. We're going to keep signing them. We're going against the grain. You know, we're signing old players. Well, now it's coming to bite you in the ass. Well, you know, here's the thing, though. Like the core players have still been really, really good. Like compare them to like the Washington Capitals. Like always regressed. He's still scoring goals, but he has regressed. Backstrom has basically gone into retirement. Oh, she's same thing. And not totally their fault. They've dealt with tons of injuries and factors beyond their own control. But like Kuznetsov is in Russia now. Um, Like their core declined. Crosby has still been like a top five player at points. Malkin has still been a very productive top six center. Uh, Carlson won the Norris two years ago. And even Chris Letang has still been very good. They just, Hextall and even Dubas, like now they just haven't like built around them. They lost Jake Gensel. Um, Tristan Jari just forgot how to play goalie. I mean, he he was gone for the NHL for a full month this season, came back, started against, uh, who was it? Who did they lose to the other night? Was it the, the, no, it wasn't the Stars. I mean, the Stars game was pretty bad. But what did Jari just, oh, they played the Blue Jackets. Jari let in the first shot of NHL action he saw in over a month. Welcome back, buddy. Awful, awful stuff. Yep. So um, we haven't even said the team name yet. We've just been talking about their players. So uh, Pittsburgh Penguins are uh, that this team stinks um, honor this week. So this upcoming week, they'll probably be pretty good. Um, But I was going to say they have Carlson at a $10 million cap hit at age 34 locked in until year 2027. They have Chris Letang, who's 37, locked up until 2028. They just extended That's Crosby. Crazy. They just expended Malkin. Like, they have all these older players, and they have to rebuild, but I'm pretty sure they've already said that we're not rebuilding until Crosby retires. Yeah, which is just like, dude, you got to sit down and have the conversation. Just be like, look, you can, you can still rebuild with, like, talent. Like, we saw... Um, the Kings did it for a few years. Kopitar and Dowdy sat through some pretty iffy seasons. I don't know. You can... <sighs> Whatever. I mean, it's not like they have a ton of picks right now, right? Didn't they... Did they have their first this year? Or was that last year they didn't have it? I feel like they gave they gave up draft picks for Carlson, definitely. Um, I, don't know, I guess I can look at Puckpedia. They are... I, they don't have... They, they hardly have a farm system. They lost... <laughs> They um I guess they did get McGrory recently, but that was a swap with their other bro- best prospect. So I, he didn't really make up any ground here. Um, they I, they already have made a trade this year. They they traded Lars Ellers, and they only yeah. got a a fifth in twenty twenty five, and it's a third in twenty twenty seven. Yeah, they don't have a second round pick this year. They do have all their first round picks the next few years. They got two seconds next year, two thirds next year. Two seconds the year after, two seconds the year after that. They actually have three third round picks this Yeah, they're 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 in a tough, tough spot. But they got three Stanley Cups to sing them a lullaby at night, so I doubt they're feeling too bad. Yeah, they can cry themselves to sleep. Is that all you got, JP? That's all I got. That this team stinks. I mean I mean shout out Jonah. He wrote an article about them. Check it out. It was very well written. There's some players that we could be interested in. I mean, Jonah talked a lot about Michael Bunting. Um, I think Marcus Pedersen is probably the biggest name if you want to make a top four addition um, for our defense. But they're more left-handed like, defensemen. Well, 
Yeah, but at least he's very good. It's true. I, I know. I'm it's just true. joking. Plus, like you can you never know, have yeah. too many left-handed defensemen. Dude, like if you're the Sabres organization, yeah. you got to be absolutely sick of this Samuelson stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like the guy's just not playing. He's straight up they... not playing. And even Didn't when he someone mention that last year? Some insiders said that, you know... The organization's fed up with him or... not being available. Yeah, or they're getting be. frustrated. Yeah. Like, I... And, you know, the only role he has really worked really well in is the third pair. And it's like, that's fine. You know, he's he probably is a decent third pair defenseman. You know, if he wasn't making $4.2 million for the next seven years, people are probably fine with it. But he is, and he's not. he's hardly even available. I mean, it's been brought up this week, like that under-26 buyout. They might do that, man. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. You save, you only have to pay him a third of the money he's owed. And you get out of that long-term commitment. I wouldn't be surprised if they did it. I mean, hey, I would not be surprised at all if um, some team bites on Samuelson because the tools are just, you know, they're kind of insane for, like, potential-wise, but... I don't know, man. And you could trade for Marcus Patterson and replace him. I remember thinking at the deadline two years ago when the Oilers traded for Matthias Ekholm, that, that was like that was like the guy the Sabres needed. Two way mm-hmm. defenseman, top pairing potential. Like that was the guy they needed. And you know, maybe he didn't he maybe didn't want to come to Buffalo and maybe at, at the Oilers I think gave up Tyson Berry in that trade, which I guess the Sabres didn't have like an equivalent, but I don't know, man. I kind of think Marcus Pedersen comes from that same ilk. Not going to happen, though, because they're going to trade for a forward, and they'll call it a day. They'll call it a day. Pack it up. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. But, yeah, uh, go check out that article. It's linked on all our socials, or you can go check it out at buffsportstalk.com. Um, I did talk about bunting, talked about Pedersen, Raquel, Beauvillier, uh, who's the last? Drew O'Connor was the only one guy I really didn't like, but he's kind of being one of the main guys on their trade block. So go give that a read if you'd like. That'd be funny if the only addition they made was trading for another bottom six guy. Dude, like I thought he was decent. The slap in the face. I feel like his reputation kind of like builds him up a bit more because like the numbers are not good and he doesn't score. He's just kind of fast. So. Anyways, I know that JP has one more thing he wanted to bring up before we sign off here. Yeah, this is for our, uh, what? we Do we still not have like a formal name for this I, segment? It's just like catching up with old friends or something. Checking in on old friends. Yeah, all right. Checking in on old friends, old Sabres friends. Um, this one, it's close to my heart. Um, I came across this. Um, and I just wanted to let you know all my Sabres friends know. He doesn't even um, need to say it. I already know who this is going to be. <laughs> We're going all the way to Switzerland to talk about this uh, this old former saver. My buddy, um, who I have his jersey, Lawrence Pilot. Um, he tore his Achilles tendon, and he is out for the season. So I, heart, I wish man. him a speedy recovery. Yeah, it, it does break your heart. They it will In this article that I did found, he's going to be staying with his team to motivate his teammates. I mean, he's just a great guy. Um, so stop it. You're making me, you know, hopefully he comes back healthy next needs year. needs to stop. <laughs> we have been hexed twice. I had to bring that we up. We let that guy go twice, and our franchise has been worse off both times. It's true. It's very true. I've, I've debated wearing his jersey so far this year, but the last two games I've been at with my cousin's jersey, they've won an overtime and shootout, so... Once once I lose with that jersey, I will be wearing the pilot jersey to the next Sabres game. I do have two more that I can add on to that. For one, we're 18, well, about 20 games into this NHL season. Sam Reinhardt still leads the league in goals. Right now he's tied with only Lee Andre Seidel. That's it. Isn't it crazy that he actually has become a better player than Jack Eichel? Like, it's not even, like, up for debate right now. Like, Eichel had the great cup run, but uh, Reinhardt also had a great cup run, and he is a Selkie finalist last year. If it wasn't for yeah. Barkov, he would have won it. It is crazy, man. He took him for granted. And last one, old friend Matt Irwin announced his retirement the other day. Sabres legend. 
God bless. A part of the worst season in franchise history. But he will not yep. be forgotten. And if you look at his at his numbers or his analytic numbers throughout his whole career, his worst season was with the Sabres. Yeah. Pretty odd. Brand. Sounds about right. I actually got one more thing. If if we're done with hockey talk. How many more things? We're done with hockey talk? I got one more thing. Buffalo Bandits. They had a preseason game last night i believe their first game is like in two or two or three weeks so thank god be on the lookout for you know championship banner raising and the only you know actual good team in buffalo the hunt for the three pete begins it's a good point and we're playing the bills are playing a team that's hunting for a three pete tonight so mm-hmm. mm. yeah by the time this is out people already know you know it's actually kind of funny like i don't care about to, like they're eight and two, like and they're going to the playoffs. So it's like even this game, like it's hard for mm-hmm. me to get up for. It's like doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Like this team has, yeah. I like you know how badly I wish for that to happen to my hockey team. Like I have literal apathy for the Bills regular season. You know, I barely even watched last week because they um, took the early lead, and I had like stuff to do. I had stuff to do for this, and I was like, you know, they're gonna win. Everybody's, you know, I saw the classic like first half. Everybody's freaking out. Josh is having a Bad game. Still won thirty to what nineteen. So I think thirty to twenty. Thirty to twenty. So that's what it is, man. I <laughs> every time they there's a mental breakdown in the Bills community every week, and they still win by like two scores. It's hilarious. It's so funny. They're such a good team. Yep. Oh well. With injuries too. Yeah, with, with injuries. injuries. Yeah, Look at the injuries. Sabres with injuries. It's the other way around. Oh, my God. Every game's a freaking slugfest. I want to... He's a bottom feeder. It's still a slugfest. <laughs> it's terrible, man. Terrible, terrible. When will it be my turn? All right. So, I think with that, it's going to do it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. If you somehow made it to the end, not a lot of fun talk today but it's always good to let loose for a little bit um i know some people some people are always asking for us to do it just like that we are too too nice to them to and i'm talking about you jd in particular he's always asking us for to to cut a little deeper on them on on the whole so hopefully this i'm sure this negativity sells and negativity does sell to a certain crowd so i'm sure this provided some so much me- much needed levity to some people that wanted to hear it. But uh, looking ahead here, we will probably talk to you guys Thursday. They play the Kings Wednesday night, um, and that's that'll be it. First edition of Sabres After Dark this season, so can't wait for that. Hopefully not in bed true. too quick after the first five minutes of the game. Yeah, Kings games usually don't go well. Uh, especially they are one of the best defensive teams in hockey, so can't imagine... Uh, Against a team that cannot score for some reason. How will this game go? It remains to be seen. So, yeah, expect an episode to come to you guys Thursday. If not, we'll talk to you guys Wednesday or uh, Sunday. Recap the entire West trip. Hopefully in better spirits than today. And hopefully with a new addition to the roster. Although I'm not holding my breath. But I do think it's coming. I just don't know when. I think it should be more than one person, but oh well. No. Yes. Beggars, beggars can't be choosers. Our November edition will be activating Tage Thompson off the IR. I always laugh when that happens. Like I think, like Joe and I are Red Sox fans. I think Tristan Casas was our deadline edition because he was hurt the whole year and then he came back at the end. Don't worry. This year, our off-season edition will be Juan Soto. Yes, Good I did want to mention that. I yep, Juan Soto to the Red Sox. Good luck Spoke with it. that. Roki Saki too. Okay. And Vlad Guerrero Jr. We're just gonna. This of the whole, yeah. You're <laughs> yes, assembling yeah. the building a super team. Yep. yep. <laughs> hey, their At owner least... might be back, so maybe. I heard this last summer about the Sabers. It's giving me similar vibes. So he's gonna go to the Dodgers, and this whole league's gonna be screwed for the next ten years. Yeah. I don't the think he'll go to the Dodgers. They, I didn't think they had a meeting with him though, so I, that's kind of encouraging. No. The meetings have been the Sox, Blue Jays, Mets, and then Yankees are meeting with them tomorrow. So, yeah, it's going to be one of the New York teams, probably, unfortunately, probably, but I'll, I'll hold out hope. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the Mets. 
that's probably my that's probably my favorite pick right now. They're gonna have the the biggest offer probably. Yeah, I mean oh, they yeah. got the richest owner in baseball, so makes sense. Mm-hmm. All right, so we will talk to you guys next time. Uh, take care, uh, and as always, go Sabers. Go Sabers. Go Sabers.